Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Andy Downey. I'm the minister here in Castle Wellen. Um, on behalf of the Kirk Session and the congregation, may I express the, our sympathies to you all, but especially to you, Jenny, and to Robert, David, Gordon, Anne, your spouses, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren at this time. Please be assured of our prayers and support in these days, weeks, and months that lie ahead. Um, these are Strange times, I've been told by many people, this church, even the hall, wouldn't be able to hold the number of people who would wish to be here. Um, we are streaming this service uh, online, and I know the family have appreciated, and I have gotten myself a number of calls and messages to express condolences to you on behalf of many people. We gather this afternoon to do a number of things, to mourn the loss of Robin Emery, to remember and give thanks for his long life, and to hear of the sure and certain hope that is found in Jesus Christ, even in the face of death and in the midst of bereavement and loss. God's word, the Bible tells us that God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. And that praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the all-merciful Father, the God whose consolation never fails us. God's word speaks comfort and reassurance to us at all times, but especially times such as these. We're going to sing praise now to God, thinking about the hope found in Jesus Christ. We're going to sing the words of the first song in your orders of service. I'd ask you to remain seated uh, and sing with your masks on. Again, these are strange times that we live in, we're going to sing the words of the old rugged cross. And 
exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, the old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged Let's pray together. Almighty God, we come to you in prayer this day. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your consolation, which never fails us. You are watching over us each minute of each day. Indeed, you have numbered each of our days. It is you alone who knows our beginning from our end. We thank you for the comfort 
that brings, that nothing in this world surprises you or is unknown to you. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have come through death into everlasting life so that we too may know with certainty that our earthly death is not the end for your people, for those who put their faith and trust in you. As we think about earthly death today, make us mindful of our own life and our own mortality and speak to us through your word as it is read and preached. We confess that we are sinful people. Not one part of our lives is untouched by sin and sinfulness. So as we gather this afternoon, we say sorry for our sins. We confess our brokenness to you and ask for your forgiveness. Holy Spirit, make us aware of our need for God this day. Our need for your comfort, your presence, your grace and mercy. We pray these things, praising you, our God, for the forgiveness and the life that is offered to us in and through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We hear now from God's word from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We thank God for his word. I'm going to share with you a tribute to Robin. Thank you to Anne for sharing some thoughts and memories about her dad with me and getting this ready for me. Robin Emery was born on the 4th of December 1936, the middle child of five. He was always a social animal and met Ginny at a dance in the late 50s and the rest, they say, is history. That was the start of a lifelong partnership which resulted in four children, Robert, David, Gordon and Anne, 14 grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. Quite a legacy in and of itself. Robin lived life to the full, which is a testimony of so many that I have heard from in these last few days. A life which I am sorry to have not gotten to know more about since my arrival as minister here just over a year ago. During his life, Robin put his heart and soul into running the sawmill. Although he suffered a serious stroke in 2001, which meant he could no longer work, it didn't stop him from enjoying life. His two great passions came to the fore after he retired classic cars and the Masons. Both provided him with much enjoyment and kept his social life as active as an A-list celebrity. From my, from my short time in Castle Island so far, I know Robin as an enthusiastic member of the congregation here, the man with the cemetery books, which is a vital job needing done in any congregation. And since returning to public worship in August last year, having been out of church since March, there was barely a Sunday where Robin and Ginny weren't out with us. And again, it's one of my big regrets in my time here not to have been allowed to visit. Um, the, the system says no, that we can't do any of that. And I haven't been get to know really anyone in the congregation as well as I wish I would have. And again, by this account, Robin was a man I certainly wanted to get to know. Life with Robin, I am told, was never dull. Quite often infuriating, yes, but never dull. Indeed, Anne said this tribute could go on for hours with the stories and memories that could be shared about Robin. And hopefully in the future, there'll be a day when we can gather again and share those stories with one another. He was always ready for the road and would have turned up at the opening of an envelope if he had been invited. His days out and his trips to Dublin were rarely without incident. Like the time he accidentally left Dublin, a Dublin hotel wearing the manager's coat rather than his own. No big mistake there, you would think. But the manager was a lady. But all got resolved in the end. 
his ventures in his classic cars, again, could probably fill a book in their own right, as they often ended in some form of breakdown in the middle of nowhere. At this point, Robin would ring his own version of the AA, his grandson Ross, who was dispatched with various spare parts, a can of petrol, and soon Grand would be back on the road again. Horses were also a lifelong passion, which, as young children, all the children participated in, some more enthusiastically than others, and adds. There were regular escapades with the horses that would involve the whole family being roped in and any unsuspecting relatives that happened to be visiting that day. It's amazing the children all didn't become cross-country runners considering the amount of miles Anne remembers them running through fields trying to corner horses that had escaped or refused to be loaded back into the lorry. Health and safety wasn't yet invented and someone inevitably ended up with a few good bruises to mark their day. Normally, Anne says it was Gordon, who was the regular recipient of a socking horse kick, just as we thought they were getting somewhere, and the circus would begin all over again. Happy days and happy memories, Anne writes. As Robin got older, his sight and his hearing weren't what they used to be, which only added to the character that he was. No one in the family will forget on one of his many hospital stays the comment about Mrs. O'Reilly in the bed opposite. He had mistaken the nil orally sign hanging from her bed as her name. Only last week, when Ginny needed a plaster for her finger, he rummaged in a drawer and produced a plastic knife, fork and spoon and serviette set from an Aer Lingus flight that he had taken in 1999. Although swearing blind, it was the medical kit the nurse had given him after his recent COVID jab. That was my dad, Han wrote. Of course, as you all know, for all his socialising and ebullient character, he was nothing without Ginny, his beloved wife and the mother of his children. She was his rock and mainstay throughout his adult life. And on the rare occasion she spent a few nights away visiting relatives without him, he was lost without her. In all of life's twists and turns, Ginny was always by his side. He loved spending time with his family and seeing his grandchildren and great-grandchildren but ultimately it was Ginny who was the love of his life. As a family and as God's people here at Castle Well, and we give thanks to God for the long and blessed life of Robin Emery. Earlier I read the famous words of Psalm 23, words that we will sing to close our service in a short while. The Psalm speaks of who God is, the shepherd, who cares for, who leads, and is with his people through all of life. It speaks about who God's people are. They are the sheep that he looks after, that he leads with rod and staff to comfort and guide. It also speaks about the extent of God's care for his people, for his sheep. It is through valleys and on the heights. It's in the presence of enemies and even our greatest enemy, death. And ultimately, it's for our good grass, green and water still. It is especially at times such as these that we need to be reminded of who God is and that God is with us, isn't it? That he cares for us, he's looking out for us, walking ahead of us and beside us each and every moment of what we're going through, what you're going through in these days, through the pain and suffering that a death of a loved one brings to us. To you, the family and friends of Robin Emery, to you, Jenny, and to Robert, David, Gordon, and Anne, your spouses, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, the rest of the family and friends. God's goodness and mercy, his love and care are there for you. You may feel uncertain and unsteady today and tomorrow and as the days and weeks go by, but by faith God will be with you. At the end of this psalm, its author King David speaks with confidence that he shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That he will have eternal life in the presence of God himself. Thoughts that gave David peace and comfort in the midst of his real life uncertainties. Later in the Bible, in John's writings about the life and death of Jesus Christ, we read words of peace and comfort which Jesus Christ himself, the good shepherd, spoke to his disciples and speaks to us today. In them, Jesus also speaks of the house of the Lord, or as he puts it, his father's house. Jesus says this, 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. These words from Jesus come in the middle of chaos and turmoil for his disciples. They're eating their last supper together and Jesus has just predicted that one of his disciples, one of these men or who are his closest friends, is going to betray him. In the verses immediately before the ones I just read, you hear panic and confusion on the lips of the other disciples. They can see their world slowly turning upside down. They can see what is coming down the tracks towards them. And it's into all of this chaos and confusion that Jesus says to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. He later goes on to assure them that peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Again, these are words of comfort and they assure us in the middle of troubles in our lives day by day, but especially at times such as these. But in this passage, in these words, Jesus is pointing to a far greater truth, a far greater reality. Jesus speaks of going ahead of us to prepare a place in the Father's house, his Father's house. And he says, having gone there to prepare a place, He will come back to take us to that place with him. Death, a bereavement, does certain things to us, doesn't it? It hurts us because we suffer loss. It changes us because life after the loss of a loved one is different and will always be different from life before when that person was still alive. It also confuses us. It leaves us with questions which may go unanswered for A long time. We see Jesus' disciples confused as Jesus speaks to them. One of them even protesting that they don't know where Jesus is going. So they can't know the way that he has told them to take. Death hurts us. It changes us. It confuses us. But death also challenges us. At the time of a bereavement we are faced with our own mortality. That is inescapable truth that one day we all too will die. And so Jesus' words in John 14 and his words in the 23rd Psalm give us not just timely hope, earthly hope, but also an eternal hope. There are some who see biblical Christianity as just a crutch for the weak in this world, something to hold on to when we feel like we need help, but when things are going well, not relevant. But it's not that. It is help, but it is far more than that. It is a source of eternal hope, a source of certainty in the face of uncertainty, of the uncertainties of life on earth. The place that Jesus is speaking of in John 14 is heaven. It's his father's house, the mansions that the King James Version speaks of. The promise that Jesus makes here is that he has prepared a place for each one of his people in heaven, a room in his father's house and more than that Jesus promises that he'll return to take us to that house to be with him and his father how do we know the way to this house well Jesus tells his disciples I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me Jesus makes this promise of eternal life with God in heaven to those who trust in him who profess faith in what he would go and do on the cross and rising from the dead. He is the way, the only way to the Father, the only way to eternal life with God in heaven. What is the result of trusting in this promise of Jesus and acknowledging him as the way, the truth, and the life? Well, firstly, it's peace in this life, the peace that comes from knowing that we are kept safe by the Good Shepherd, as we heard in Psalm 23. The peace that Jesus promises his followers in John's writings, they would have that peace even though Jesus would go on to heaven. 
It's an earthly peace that passes all worldly understanding, looking at the uncertainties of coronavirus, the uncertainties of our own lives, the uncertainty even of death, and having peace. But it's also an eternal peace and eternal life with God in heaven. An earthly peace that takes us beyond our earthly days. Let me close by repeating some of the words that Jesus spoke into his disciples' time of pain and loss. They are words which give hope to those who call Jesus their Savior and Lord. It allows them to face the uncertainties of life, even the pain of death and loss, with confidence. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Let us pray together. God of all comfort, we thank you for your word, which speaks to us even in the midst of pain and loss. We thank you for the words of Jesus, which point us to life beyond this world, to eternal life, to a heavenly life, As we hear these words, we ask you for your comfort to be with us now. That you would make yourself known as your Holy Spirit turns our thoughts to you and to your goodness. We pray for Ginny, that you would be especially close to her in these days. Surround her with your love. Assure her of your presence and your goodness as you watch over her as you have promised to. We pray for Robert. David, Gordon, and Anne, as they mourn the loss of their father. We thank you that you are our heavenly father whose love goes beyond anything we can know and experience or imagine in this world. May they know that love today. We pray for the grandchildren and great-grandchildren as well as the wider family circle and for those who were friends of Robin. Be with them all. We pray, comfort them, console them. Help them to know that Robin is now at peace. He is with his heavenly father and beholding the face of his saviour and Lord, which is better by far. And so we pray these things, confident in the name of that saviour and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. We bring our service to a close with the words of the 23rd Psalm as we sing together the Lord's my shepherd. Again, please remain seated and sing with your masks on.
now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.